Hello everyone. As fast as possible, I am going to try to show you how to download the Camp Studio 2.7 program and configure it and get it running with your system. So first go to campstudio.org and download the uh, file. Okay, and you'll get to this page. Scroll on down. You can click to donate, but donations have been a little spotty. So we've got a new installer. It does kind of require to be on the internet because it's a very small file that actually does the download for you and handles the installation and everything. But it offers to download a advertised program piece of software that you can opt in to. Uh, well, more actually, more accurately, you can opt out of installing it by unchecking a box. Just like you've seen a lot in lately in installers. But it's a way of us monetizing the program so that we get some income from it, because donations have been a little spotty, and finance uh, hiring some developers and programmers to add new features and bug fixes and make Camp Studio just terrific. So we have big plans for it. Go to the forum and take a look at what the kinds of plans we have just initially all right all right so here we go scroll on down you'll see the download link now you can get the lossless video codec but for most uses you don't need that you I'm going to recommend getting XVID or the X.264 codecs instead and I'll show you how to get them um, you can use the codec Camp Studio lossless codec in a pinch, but that's if you're doing archival quality types of things, which you probably don't need. Okay, it's uh, you can get about nine minutes worth of video using Camp Studio. If you go over that, you'll probably crash the program because it's got a two gigabyte file size limit. And when you're recording the audio and the video in lossless, you get out nine minutes and then you hit the two gigabyte ceiling, you know, that quickly. Using XVID, I can record, geez, up to three hours if I have the right settings. But anyway, if you have any questions, go to the forum, campstudio.org forum, and we can get you straightened out. But this will be the general overview to get you started so that you've got the program installed. I've got some codecs in there, which are the compressing things that make the video smaller, so it's a smaller file size, and can get your audio to work. Okay, so let's hit the download button. And you'll see it downloads the program and let's run it there we go It'll bleep at me and it brings up our new installer okay so it says as it tells you right there this will download and install the software on your computer so you see it's this downloads so quickly because it's just an installer that handles the downloading process reason it had to be like that is because if you opt in to having the advertised program also installed, it's got to download that too. So you hit next. It's got the general thing about our being open source and you can read about the license. You can go to our forum, which I do welcome you to come to the forum and terms of use and privacy policy and all that good stuff. It's free software. As it says, if you paid for it, you should claim your money back. All right, always get the uh, official version right from Camp Studio. And okay, so here's where you have the software offer. And it's an opt out type of a thing. It's already ch checked there where it says, by clicking next, I agree to the terms of use and privacy policy and consent to install DApply. Easily uninstall it in add remove programs in the event that you do install it. Okay, now we've been told it's a clean uninstall. If you got it in, there's no malware left behind, no tracking left behind, and any uninstall of anything that they're going to advertise with us. So we're feeling comfortable, but let us know if any such things happen because we definitely consider that a transgression. Uh, but to keep from doing it, it's an opt out, as I said. If you don't want it, you uncheck the box. So now you can move on to the install of just Cam Studio without the extra. Get it? Then you hit next and it downloads the file. Now I'm going to get some errors because I'm already running uh, Camp Studio, believe it or not, 2.0. So it's writing over. Plus I have the uh, program already installed. So just hit ignore three times so I can get through this. One more coming up. There we go. There we are. 
So it'll come, go through and it'll say completed and hit next. And it says installation completed. Thank you for installing Cam Studio. I've already got the program open because I have to start uh, 2.7 first before 2.0 if I want to use 2.0 to record myself. Yes, I'm actually recording this with the original version. So I'm on checking that, clicking finish, and that's all there is to it. All right. And now I've got this program running. So let me bring it up. And there's Cam Studio, the new 2.7 version. You go to the about and you'll see is 2.7. We also have links to the website and to the FAQ and stuff like that. The frequently asked questions, the FAQs. And so there you go, that brings up the frequently asked questions. And the other brings up the home page, which we're at now. Okay. All right. The help files uh, are not working yet. There's a video on my YouTube channel that shows how to migrate the help files from the original 2.0 version, if you've got that. And um, maybe I'll zip those up and let make it available so that you can uh, install those. But you basically unzip would unzip that file. In fact, here's the folder. It's got that stuff in it. And um, and you would just copy those files into the Camp Studio folder. Okay. All right. So now you've got the program. It's up and running. Let's go through the settings that you're going to need to make it work. Okay. So right away under File, you've got Record, Pause, Stop, and Exit. It's all that's under the File thing. Those are reflected in these buttons. Record, Pause, Stop. Okay. And Exit, of course, is the X button. Uh, these buttons in here let you switch modes so you can change the view so that you see less of the Camp Studio window. You can uh, bring up a, the screen annotations dialog, which we're not going to go into in this video. And, or the uh, you can toggle between whether you're going to record in AVI, which is how I recommend you start, or record a flash video instead and then it will say record to SWF. Okay, do you see that? Record to SWF. I recommend that you not record to SWF but record to AVI first. You can use all much far superior encoders to flash to make better flash versions of your videos from a good raw AVI that you've made, okay? But in a pinch, if you just know you're going to go to Swift anyway, you can use this. And there's options under here for record to flash options. I highly recommend checking this box here, display conversion options before generating the SWF file. Okay, because that will let you make changes to how it gets displayed and all kinds of things. Where you put it, I would not recommend deleting the intermediate AVI file upon completion. I would keep that in case something breaks. So I would uncheck that. So there you go. In my opinion, that's what should be the um, the defaults. Let's see. Uh, yes, and I can't, can't get a zoom it to work at the same time as a uh, fly out. Yeah. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, all right, let's go through the region portion. We'll just go through these menus in order. It starts up in fixed region with it in a little teeny 320 by 240 video. That's a very small little window, and uh, especially in today's big screens. You'll probably want to up this to at least 1270, 1280 by uh, 720, which is an HD size that went to X, uh, YouTube likes. So let's go ahead and do that. 1280 by 720. Okay, so to give you an idea, this window here is 1280 by 720, right there. Okay, and on on a uh, full 1080p monitor. So this is a full 1080 recording, meaning it's 
1080 pixels tall and 1920 1920 pixels wide that's what 1080p means 720p means it's 720 pixels tall by 1280 1280 pixels wide so that's what that means the p whenever it says something something p that's the height all right so let's imagine we're going to do though a 720 in fixed region now you can click it so it drags the corners to pan by corners it'll be when you make the recording it'll make some flashing green corners in the four corners of your region that you're recording and you can grab hold of those green flashing corners and move it around to pan but you also can set up an auto pan that will follow your cursor so that the whole window moves automatically to follow your cursor in case your cursor goes outside of the region if i went outside the region say that was this region here it would follow my cursor to make sure my cursor is always inside the recordable area you can also set whether it's a fixed top left corner um, like say 200 I typically use 200 by 200 when I'm doing 1280 by 720 because it positions the box right where you see this browser window okay and on my screen and then I have some room over here to hide my put my camp studio icon you know my camp studio box where it's out of the recorded area and not in the recording for instance and you can also use the select button to select a region and you just simply drag and drop I mean drag and pull you know click and pull and it puts in a width and height for you okay so um, the thing the trick with doing that though is always have this fixed top left corner on selected first that way it'll record what the height what the top left corner is when you start clicking and it'll get a recording of that as you see you put in 200 201 then check that box and it will listen to your thing so they'll put in 200 and now you see I can correct so say I know it was close to 1280 so I'll go ahead and make it a perfect 1280 out of my selection and now it'll do that various things okay so that's a way you can use the select button to drag and drop and get a uh, corner I'll include drags corners to pan so we can demo that in a minute now the other choice is window and window when you push the record button will ask you to click on a window and then it'll start recording okay so if you select this as your thing a little dialogue will come up like I'll go ahead and show you see click on window to be captured and so you would then click on the window that you want captured and away we go so let's just stop that it's going to try to save there we go so again it says click on window to be captured so if I click on this one now you can see those flashing corners that I was talking about you see the corner are flashing and uh, you can drag those in order to move the location of the recording region just by clicking on any one of the four and moving them around it's a little tricky sometimes but it does work okay so let's get back our cam studio window now a lot of times people will have this flashing open here and they will close that They'll, they'll close uh, the wrong thing they'll close the flashing and not have closed camp studio so they'll try to start up camp studio again and they'll have camp studio um, diminished okay so now camp studio is actually sitting down down in here in the system tray okay and to get to it to turn it off to stop it I would have to right click on it here and hit stop which I'm okay or double click it and bring it up and then hit stop it'll try to save it's a mistake to think that you'll notice the flashing thing stays let's go ahead and bring that up again 
notice that if I go ahead and dim diminish this to the system tray, which you can have happen to all of the, there we go, you can have it make that happen every single time, that then if I close this right here, and I right click on it, say close window, I really only created this terrible situation where now the flashing is flashing like mad. So how do I get rid of it? People freak out, of course, when they see this happening. You have to push stop. You have to get the program up and hit stop. <laughs> and then it finally stops. So you ever wonder why I get people complaining? Yes, it's because they right clicked down here on the flashing window and they thought it was the cam studio window and they closed the flashing which left the program in kind of a crazy position and it doesn't know what's going on and it creates that light show that you just saw all right so hope that recorded well so don't ever try to end the program from there if you've diminished the program keep in mind it doesn't diminish down here to the task bar what will still be in the taskbar if you're recording and you've got the flashing windows showing then it, that will the flashing will be down here the program itself is sitting over here in the tray bar okay you bring it back up by double clicking there or by right clicking and selecting stop for instance okay all right so it was a very important little piece you just learned let's go back to fixed region here we are. And uh, now let's run through the options really quick. Now in video options, it's going to show you in this drop down. One of the things that got fixed is that it now shows all the codecs that got that are installed in your machine. So you can go and get um, any of these codecs, FFD show, uh, Cinepak's already on a lot of computers, DivX still out there, Xvid, uh, the UT video codec, these are all compressor decompressor things that act like zip for video. They compress the video and make it so the, the file size is smaller. If you didn't do any kind of compression to video, the file sizes get really big. As I mentioned, the lossless codec that we have available, the maximum we can record is about nine minutes and then the program crashes because we hit the ceiling of two gigabytes. Something like Xvid which is one I use for everything pretty much. It's, uh, that lets me get uh, with, oh, if I record at 10 frames a second and and don't record that many keyframes, just one every 200 milliseconds or so, I mean, every 200 frames. A keyframe is a full, full recording of every single pixel on the screen. Uh, and in between, it just records what changed. So if, if I kind of space those out, so I'm only grabbing a full, full, every pixel recording, every 200 frames, I'm grabbing less information and so my file sizes don't grow big as fast, okay? So, um, and that's right here, set keyframe every. We've set up some really useful standards that you can just stick with. So you can pretty much move on right now after selecting a code, the codec and just get down to recording. In fact, you could just make a decent recording with Microsoft Video One, though I would set the thing a little bit higher than 70. Personally, I would, <laughs> I'd go to the 100. This slider really only applies to Microsoft Video One, which if you see the configuration is, uh, you know, there's some settings in here. You can go ahead and turn them up. Use 90 at least here, you know. It looks blocky. You get all kinds of weird things out of Microsoft Video One. But always record some experiments first and see how much time you can get with audio, especially, um, to make sure you don't go over the two gigabytes. While you're recording, it starts showing you an idea what your file size is for the video, but it's not really perfectly accurate. You got to do some tests, all right, and find out what your maximums are with the settings that you decide are your favorites. As you can see, the program came up with capture frames every at 100 and playback rate at 10. That's because that's what I'm recording presently with as a average. The program when you get it, oops, oh. Program when you get it will have auto check 
and it will be set to 5020. So it'll be at 50 milliseconds, 20 frames a second. The reason it skips this way and it goes into these specific settings is that you want these two boxes when you multiply them together to equal a thousand and that keeps the audio in sync because a thousand it's a hundred thousand milliseconds which equals one second and the audio is based on one second so you've got to keep these two coming to a thousand and otherwise your audio will slowly drift out of synchronization so that when you do something the audio is way out of step with what you did on the screen uh, if you're doing you, things where you want to get as much time as possible, I use the 110 setting here uh, where I get really, really long recordings. In fact, then I, you uncheck this and I set it to 200. This is every 200 frames. I get one of those full keyframes, full every pixel on the screen. And just well, my cursor's changing basically and the blinking cursor. You know, I just get my mouse cursor recorded in between. And then every 200 frames, it grabs every pixel on the screen. With that, I've been able to get about, with XVID, I've been able to get about a three hour recording to, so I can record webinars. So let's move on to XVID. XVID you can get, if you, I would uh, recommend downloading one called Jawars XVID, J-A-W-O-R apostrophe S, J-A-W-O-R apostrophe S, XVID. His main website is gone, but there's mirrors of it. In other words, other download locations uh, all over the web. And uh, so download this to get it and use Google to find it, Jawars XVID, and, um, and install it. And then it'll show up in this list when you restart Cam Studio. Okay, or you may have to restart your computer to make it show up in the list. Um, I'm going to show how to set it up real quick. So that you hit the... Now this slider here, the quality slider, has no effect on XVID or most other of these codecs. And uh, in fact, let's go back to the default. This is the default that you'll have. Leave this here checked, lock capture and playback rates, and that'll keep these two changing so that it always equals a thousand. All right, hit configure. Now I'm at XVID 1080 for the recording that I'm doing right now, and this thing, this installation just copied the settings that my other one. When it comes up, it'll say XVID Mobile, okay? Uh, if you're doing a 720, change it to 720, like this size window. Remember, we set up the uh, fixed settings to be a 720. And we also made this window to be 720. And uh, Single pass is usually good enough. Some people that do um, things with more full motion use multiple passes, but that's beyond the scope of this. I'm just trying to get you going. Set this to one. That's the best quality. Um, and this will be set to general purpose down here. Okay. And that'll get you going. You'll be fine. The thing will run. Everything will work. Um, if you want, if you're a game recorder and you want just a little bit more speed out of things, see this where it says BVOPs? Just uncheck that, okay? I'm going to leave it checked for now, but uncheck that. And then under here, down at the bottom, quality preset. Here it says general purpose. You can change that to real time. And that may give you smoother videos for game recordings. Okay, so that's for the game recording folks. People that are doing any kind of tutorials though, um, where it's just like what you're looking at now, a software type screen or a browser screen or a uh, PowerPoint slides, these other settings will do just fine. In fact, my 110 setting will do just fine. All right, so also under other options down here at the bottom, sometimes depending where you get your XVID, you click that and this will be checked display encoding status and that's going to bring up a dumb window that's trying to show you the the status of xvid in real time as you're going how are you useless for us you know just make sure that's on checked and you won't be bothered by that window suddenly showing up on your screen and getting in the way all right so there's your settings i've like this is the setting for a 720 if i was going to do full screen on mine as I'm doing now, I'd have it set to 1080. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so 
Um, so that's your settings for that. Now we can get out of that. And I'll say OK. Now the options for your cursor will set. Usually you want to show your cursor and should use the actual cursor. You might, in some occasions, want to hide the cursor so you don't see the cursor flying around. Say for a PowerPoint presentation, you don't want to take the chance of the cursor getting in the middle of the screen. But with the cursor showing, you can also choose a cursor highlight thing that allows you to um, have different, a circle show up around your cursor when you click, for instance. Uh, well, it shows up anytime. It's, it's just uh, it makes the cursor more obvious by putting yellow around it, and um, and that's just during the recording. You can also make enable visual click feedback, so you can have a left button be red, for instance, and the right button be blue. Okay, so those are some new, nice new features that were added in 2.6 or 2.5. Okay, so I'm just going to use the show cursor thing and stays normal. Oh, what the heck? I will actually be making a recording, so I'll show you. I'll show you some colored cursors. So we'll, we'll highlight it and we'll enable both of these. There we go. Okay, now the audio options. Well, right now it comes in de by default set to do not record audio. You want to be recording some audio, most likely from your microphone. Now, although there's a record audio from speakers option, it probably won't work for you. It works on very few pieces of hardware that are modern. It took advantage of some hardware hooks that were prevalent on XP era machines. Although a very few machines, apparently we've heard, uh, have these hooks in them because this works for some people. So give it a try, it may work for you. It most likely won't. It might probably give you a wave out error be the error you get wave out error and um well just forget it you're not going to get it to work if you get that error from what i've understood you if you wanted to record the audio from speakers in other words record system audio you'll have to use stereo mix and that you may not have stereo mix showing with your drivers but you may be able to find drivers for your uh, audio system that include the stereo mix feature just a lot of uh, drivers ship without stereo mix, you know, being present. So anyway, so we're going to re just focus and stay focused on recording audio from the microphone for now. And there's other videos that I put in my playlist on using stereo mix. We just want to get some stuff in from the mic for first. So record audio from microphone, then go to audio options and audio options for microphone. This will come up. Now I'm using this line in uh, from a, uh, a USB um, interface that I've got my mic plugged into. But if I had a mic plugged in, it would show up in this list uh, of mics plugged in. Uh, in other words, I've had a reg just something plugged in the mic jack. Uh, I also have stereo mix available, so that's another choice from the drop down. So I would pick the one that was appropriate for my thing. The volume button at this point doesn't open the um, the control panel for the audio control panel in Windows 7 and Windows 8, but it will down the road. That's one of the bug fixes we're going to fix. Um, you have to get to that down here in the tray by right-clicking on your little speaker icon. Let's just do that. Go to Recording Devices. Now, did you see that I moved the Move that a little fast. Let's do it a little slower here. Oops. There you go. So you see it go to recording devices. And that'll open up this dialog. And I've got my line in. The one the thing that you want, and you see my, my meter is moving up here. The thing that you want, um, to be using, you simply right click and you make it enabled. So say we wanted to switch to stereo mix, we would right click on that and say set as default device. Now if your stereo mix isn't showing, right click on the background in the white area and this will show up. Make sure show disabled devices and show disconnected devices are both checked because that may be what's required to make your stereo mix appear, okay, or any other devices that are 
you know, disconnected at the moment. Um, but you would then enable it, set as default device. Now, I will tell you a trick when you're using Stereo Mix is to use Listen and send it to, say, if you're using your digital out, your SP diff out, click on Listen to this device, and it'll send the output from the, from your system audio through Stereo Mix and back out to your speakers, so you'll be able to hear it. Okay, that's just a little extra. But we are using the line in. If I was using the microphone, I would enable that. Okay, there's no microphone plugged in, but if there was, I'd be able to set that as the default device. I've got my microphone plugged in through a line in uh, USB interface. Then on playback, you see I've got line out. I can monitor things however I want if I had the listen hook turned on. Um, there's be definitely better ways to monitor them. All right, but we're not worried about that. We're most just worried about getting our sound to get in. And so you have to, like I said, right click on the thing you want to use and set it as the default device. And then make sure that that is selected in Cam Studio from the down, the drop down menu here. Okay. It'll appear. All righty. Now, recording format, it'll come up default as a 22K stereo, which is kind of a, you know, not great quality. It's okay quality. And it'll save you some on the file size because you're not recording full-blown audio, okay? If you uh, can live with the uh, sound a bit, it, it converts okay. It sounds okay. Um, I always uh, switch mine to either 44.1 stereo 16-bit or for my mic input since I only got a mic plugged in one side and all the audio would be in the left speaker if I chose stereo I choose the 44.1 mono 16-bit as the recording format. Notice I've got my compressed format as PCM. I have found that the various uh, other options, your um, uh, various MP3s and stuff like that, which I've taken out of my system because they, they the sync went bad so so much. Um, it just made the synchronization of the audio drift, and it was better to com to to convert the audio later on or let YouTube convert the audio. So I stay with PCM now. You can get pretty good results from Microsoft's ADPCM is another option, and it doesn't drift. I've had no problems with drifting, and it will make the audio file size smaller. If you're doing mono like I am, you can also use GSM 6.10. That's the same thing, the GSM, that's what the cell phones all use, but it only works in a mono signal. So only if you've switched your uh, your thing to mono, as I had earlier, will that work? Okay, so um, you'd have to have this set to mono. Then that will show up in the list. So you can give it a try. You won't break anything. Always do some tests before you commit, of course. The ADPCM is another good one. And in, at screencasttutorial.org, there's a good explanation of what on earth ADPCM is. PCM though is full blown audio. It's the original, it's your original Microsoft audio. You know, it's a CD quality audio. All right. Now, if you uh, checked use MCI recording, it would simply use whatever your system settings are. You get the exact same settings as most system settings by setting this to stereo at 44. And that would be the exact same as your system settings in most cases. But now that you have systems that can do 48 uh, bit and even higher, um, use MCI recording may really amp may give you humongous audio file sizes. So I recommend kind of staying in control of it. Do it manually. Set it to PCM here. And I used to tell everyone to use MCI, but that was before. I was in XB machines. Now, set it to PCM yourself, okay? All right, so that's, I think I beat that one to death. 
that's the big stuff. Okay, now let's quickly run through this. We've got it. Now you could just make a recording. You're all set to go. But let's change some program options because um, there are program options that are really a nuisance and you have to get your hand, handle on them. And uh, there we go. So we have minimized program on start recording that when you start the recording, the program will jump down into the tray bar automatically and get off of your screen. Okay, so um, remember, it's going to be in the tray bar, not in the system, not in the uh, bottom uh, task bar. It won't be in the task bar. Only the flashing rectangle shows there. Uh, hide flashing rectangle during recording makes it so there is no flashing rectangle. Okay, so you don't have the option of knowing where your region is if you're doing like I'm doing with just a part of the screen. You don't know where the limits of your recording region are unless you mark them some other way. Uh, I always have save settings on exit and capture translucent layered windows. On save settings from ex on exit though, sometimes you've got to start up this program as an administrator to get that to work. You right click on the icon and say run as administrator and then it'll save. It depends on where it's saving, what your permissions levels are, uh, as to whether it'll save the settings and write to that folder. Because if, if your permissions and security settings are set too high, it won't write to that folder unless you're an administrator. Okay, so then you have uh, some more here. Let's see if I can get this, yes. We have uh, several players do not play when, when the recording stops and you've saved the file it converts the file over to the AVI and combines the audio and the video portions and makes a file and you can have it open up and use the Camp Studio Player 2.0 to play back the video I recommend just using your system default player okay because that way you'll see right away if it's working in your the system that you're used to and um, there we go. Now, what else can we set here? Um, directory for recording. There's another important one. Let me get that back here. All right, directory for recording. Um, there's an application installed directory now, a videos directory that's in the program folder. Okay. And uh, that's where it is putting the temp stuff. I use a user specified directory. I actually made in my my videos folder. I made a Camp Studio temp files folder. So I'll actually show you that by going to that. And uh, on here and go to users. Me. My videos. A little further down, there it is. And you see, Camp Studio temp files is a folder I created in there, and that's where I tell it to put my temp files. I also made a folder in that folder called Fail Safe Copies, where I copy my files before I hit save. When I'm done with the video and I've hit stop, and it comes up with the dialog uh, to to save it somewhere, before I hit that. I always copy the temp files into a fail-safe copies folder in case something crashes because I may be able to rescue things. But the temp files themselves I put into my own folder. Okay, all right, so there's another setting for you. Under program options again, the directory for recording we just set, recording thread priority, normal is always just fine. And name of AVI file, I recommend setting ask for file name, okay? So let's go here again. Name of AVI file. Ask for file name is what you want. And that way it'll ask you where you want to put the file name. Now some people like using automatic file name. It puts it into whatever you've set as the temp folder for the directory for recording up here. Okay. It puts your finished product in that same folder and it names it with the date and time, a timestamp as the file name. So uh, so that's convenient for some people. They just want to be able to push the stop button and then it automatically you know, can, can puts the file, the audio and the video together and saves it with that file name and then it would be showing up 
in that folder. So let's go where this folder is. You go to your drive into program files, Camp Studio 2.7, and there you have the new videos folder. And that's where it's going to put your temp files as well as the um, the finished product if you've got if you've got that selected to save automatically. All right. So if you if you didn't change anything in here, if you make the directory for recording be the application installed directory and you have the name of AVI file be automatic file naming, then everything's going to wind up in this folder in your Camp Studio 2.7 folder. All right, but I don't like doing that myself. Okay. All right, so now we've got a, everything set up. Let's go ahead and see if this will record. Now, you don't have to cover anything in the tools. That's advanced stuff. You just want to get a recording done. So now, when I hit record, you'll see me making a recording of making a recording. And there's the flashing going on. Oh, no. So that's happening because I don't want to be showing the flash in this case. Because <laughs> I had closed that thing before. So let's just set program options to hide the flashing rectangle. Thank you very much. There we are. Okay, so now you see this comes up and it shows you that it started recording and the actual input rate uh, is nine frames per second. So if you're getting a slow input rate, I am because I'm already recording. Um, you may have to up the playback rate and lower the capture frames, uh, everything. Um, settings in video options. In other words, here, if this will open without crash, oops, no, it crashed. Okay. I crashed the Cam Studio thing. There we go. Have to open her up again. Well, anyway, so it's, you obviously can't be recording at the same time. But uh, if I had accomplished that recording, it would then would have come up with the save dialog. I won't be able to open this now, but we've gone far enough. You've seen how to get it, the basic thing happening. Then you just hit record. It would select the region, you record, push stop, and it'll ask you where you want to put it. If you've set it the way I showed you, you give it a file name, hit save, and then it should come up and play it back for you in your own player or in the Camp Studio player if you use the default settings. All right, so I hope that that got you rolling. If not, ask me some questions and I'll uh, yeah, I'll answer them over there at the, uh, at the Camp Studio forums, okay? That's again at campstudio.org forum and, uh, and you'll be golden. All right, take care.